Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Keith Brooks. I am a actor, uh, writer, director, editor, shaved Sasquatch, and teacher at the HUD School. Um, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, for this Technique Tuesday, I just want to give you a quick overview, like a Spark Notes version, of a technique called Practical Aesthetics. Practical Aesthetics is a wonderful tool and skill set that helps tons of actors digest, uh, understand, analyze, and interpret characters. And I'm just gonna give you a couple of the bullet points of uh, some of the elements that make practical aesthetics work. So first of all, what exactly is practical aesthetics? Practical aesthetics is an acting theory developed by David Mamet, who uh, is the only person I know that says the word fuck, maybe fucking more than I fucking do, and William H. Macy, who fucking is an actor who's fucking great. You might know him from Mystery Men, the remake of Psycho, uh, the show Shameless, or Jurassic Park 3. I wish that one had a subtitle, but it doesn't. Practical aesthetics is a way uh, for an actor to break down the character and understand how to give life to that character in, obviously, a practical way. Now, for uh, the sake of this video, we're going to talk about four points of practical aesthetics. And these are four points to understanding a character and getting your mind into the ideas that the script are trying to explore for you. Make sense? Cool, let's go for it. First up, we have the literal. The literal means, what does the script actually say? Let's use an example of Jack and Jill. Okay, Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water. So the literal of the script tells us what's actually happening. Jack and Jill are going up a hill to get a pail of water. It's right there in the text. It's telling us what's literally occurring. But in order to understand anything that comes next, we have to understand what is literally happening before we start analyzing anything. Now let's move on to number two. Number two, uh, the want. So what this is, is what does my character want from this scene? What is their objective, let's say? Um, I have to assign myself a character to better understand this, so let's say I'm playing the part with Jack. What does Jack want out of this? Well, he wants water. It's right there. Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water. But because we don't have context, I don't really understand the motivation behind why Jack's wanting water. Oftentimes, if we have uh, sides that are brief and don't give us a lot of explanation, we as actors have to infer what those motivations are. So I'm gonna do that right here. I'm going to say the village down below is on fire. Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water to put the fire out. So the literal is now changed and adjusted because I've made a backstory for it, but the literal is still there going up a hill to get the water. My character's want is to grab the water so I could put the fire out. Make sense? So now I understand it on a literal level, but now I've also analyzed the objective or the want of my character. Got it? Cool, let's move on to number three. Number three, the essential action. This is where it's going to get a little complicated. What I do here is I look at my want. My want is so specific to the character and it's specific to the story. What I want to do is boil that down to what that action essentially is in universal terms. That doesn't mean in terms of the studio that produced the Fast and the Furious movies, but something that everyone can relate to, all right? so. What is going on? Jack and Jill uh, go up a hill to fetch a pail of water to put the fire out. Essentially, what are they trying to do? Now, I can interpret this in multiple, you know, multiple ways, but I'm gonna say for the sake of this uh, demonstration, the essential action is to help, to solve, uh, to solve a problem. That's the, the, the essential action here. Jack and Jill are getting water to put a fire out, which is essentially the same thing as trying to solve a problem. And that's something everyone can, can relate to. We've all had to solve a problem at one point in our life, right? Um, we've all had to come to the rescue in some uh, set of circumstances. That is something that we can universally relate to. So I have boiled down the literal, I've understood the want or the objective, and now I've interpreted that want or objective as an essential action or a universally relatable thing, right? Now let's move on to step four. Step four is the as if. Now you've probably heard the term as if tons of times, and almost every single acting methodology redefines what the term as if can mean. Here in practical aesthetics, it might mean something different than what you're used to. 
What's happened is I've defined the script on a literal level. Then I've looked at the very specific want of my character. I've taken that specific want and I've blown it up to something that appeals to people universally. But now I want to narrow it down one more time as if it was something that could happen in my life. Take that same essential action, something that everyone can relate to, and find a way I could relate to it in a potential case that could happen to me. So something, uh, we said the essential action was trying to solve a problem. What is an instance where I could be trying to solve a problem? Let's say that I'm teaching for the Hood School and a teacher calls out last minute and needs a substitute. So I rush in to be the substitute, right? That is me trying to solve a problem. That is something that could happen in my life. Here is a very important note that when we're doing this as if, we want it to be something that could potentially happen, not something that has happened. If it has happened, we already know how that ended. So there are no real stakes to it, understand? If it's something that could happen, then we can let it live out and breathe in all of the danger that it presents to us, if that makes any sense, or sounds overdramatic, I don't give a fuck, listen. Um, so in that particular example of me solving that problem, let me think about how that makes me feel. If I'm filling in for a teacher at the last minute, trying to solve that problem, I might be nervous. I might be a little frustrated. I might be a little thrown off by game. I might be a little tongue tied or stammering or any of that, right? That might be the way I'm reacting to solving this problem. I know I have to do it. Uh, I, I'm dedicated to it. I'm determined to solve the problem, but the effects are still in my body. It still left me a little shaken. Can I apply that to the want of my character? Can I apply all of that to the literal circumstances I'm describing? Almost every acting theory just boils down to how can you better understand and interpret what's happened. If I use the lessons I've learned from the as if and apply them to the literal, to the want, it further dictates to me a way that I can bring this character to life. It tells me a way I can get in and understand what this character is experiencing and what they're going through. And that's my entire goal. And now those are four simple steps to get there. It just takes a little bit of legwork in your mind, right? Now, by, by no means is this the entirety of practical aesthetics. It's quite a uh, in-depth study, but, but this is sort of a boiled down version of some of the elements that they try to teach you about. If you're interested in practical aesthetics, there's some great books here for you to, uh, to look through. Um, and, and I advise anyone learn as many techniques and styles as you can. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and keep playing. Thanks, guys.